So of course, kind of spinning up in inventory, we'll jump into items here in the top left. We're just gonna walk through setting up a basic item here and some of the key things that you wanna be aware of. Um, so under the item section, we'll go ahead and add a new item up in the top right. And so kind of right out of the gate, up at the top, we'll choose if this is a good or a service. Of course, if it's a service, it's not something that we're gonna track a um, inventory count for. You know, it kind of works a little bit differently when you're accounting for these things. But as we get started, we'll go ahead and set up our first one here as a good. Um, kind of running down the page, of course, we're gonna give a product a name as well as a SKU. Uh, and then lastly, we're gonna choose what kind of unit we wanna track this in. Um, those are customizable. They have examples anywhere from by the box, by the ounce, you know, by the inch, right? So it kind of just depends on what one unit of this product would look like for you. Um, and then down below, an important one is to make sure that you have your dimensions and weights for the product set up. Um, that'll just have an effect once you get into actually doing your packaging, especially if you're using an integration to a service like EasyShip. If all your various products have a proper dimension and weight, um, a lot of those platforms can actually suggest a good box size or shipping option based on some of those parameters. So if you're pretty consistent about adding them in, it's just going to save you time later when you go to actually ship things out. And then down here at the bottom of the page, of course, we're going to fill in what our default sales price for an item is, what our default purchase price is, as well as what our inventory count is going to be. Um, now, in this case, because I am adding um, a new item, it's going to ask me for what my opening stock was and how much I paid per unit for that opening stock. Um, that's just going to affect what it's going to add into your active inventory assets. Um, one thing that's important to note here is that even though I'm setting a sales and a purchase price, when I actually create a sales order or purchase order, I can always edit those prices for a specific order. Um, now, of course, sometimes you'd want to do that as a discount, or sometimes you'd want to edit the base price just based on your use case. Um, but it is just important to know that you're not uh, locked in stone once you add those. Um, additionally, we'll see here it's kind of adding to some standard accounts. Uh, so an account for sales, an account for cost of goods sold. If you break those out further inside of your chart of accounts, then you can assign different items to different account entries, you know, based on however you'd like to group an account for the sales and purchases of those items. And so once we have our item created here, um, you know, it'll add itself to our list of active items. Um, but if you do have a large amount of SKUs or a lot of inventory, you may want to do this via an import. You don't have to go in and add each item one by one. Um, so to do that up there in the top right under the three lines, which is, you know, one of Zoho's universal symbols for more, um, under there, we can go ahead and import some additional items. On this page, it is going to give you an option to download a sample file. Um, what we actually recommend doing is adding a product and then exporting your items first and using the exported spreadsheet to add all of your values to get it imported. There's just a couple little oddball columns that that will add that actually are pretty important um, in terms of like your purchase account. You know, they have an item type which is important for turning on if it's a purchasable or inventory tracked item. Number um, so, of items. Number yeah, and so items. when in doubt, <laughs> yeah, when in doubt, just pull that export of one and then use that to get your import done. Um, but in this case, we'll go ahead and kind of move forward here. Again, you can use that sample file and it's gonna give you the baseline of what you need. You'd probably just need to do some edits after the fact. And then similar to importing into any Zoho application, it's gonna give you a page like this where we basically line up the field inside of inventory there on the left with the column inside of the spreadsheet that we want to use to fill in that field. Um, you can also do this as an update. So if it's seeing an existing item with that same name, it's going to update values rather than create a new item. So it's pretty good at identifying those duplicates as long as the names of everything's match um, inside, of, inside of inventory and your spreadsheet that you're importing. Um, kind of moving to another function here with items that Brett quickly touched on, um, you know, so we'll go through this kind of quick, but inventory adjustments are pretty powerful here within Zoho inventory. Um, so of course, you're going to have that default stock, you're going to be processing sales, you're going to be pro processing purchases, those are going to be, you know, decreasing and increasing your inventory respectively. Um, but of course, things happen, right, inventory gets lost. Um, 
you know, you're going to need to do adjustments and recounts periodically. And so to do that, we can go ahead and add a new adjustment here. Um, like Brett mentioned, there's a variety of different reasons that you can do an adjustment for. Um, so in this case, you know, I like that one of their defaults here is stock on fire, uh, which is uh, hopefully not too common where it would need to be a default. Um, common one that we'll use is things like stock taking results, right? You've gone in there, you've counted all your items, you find there's some changes you need to make. And then down here, of course, we'll start adding in our products. Um, you can do this either by uh, changing what the new quantity on hand should be or you can say, I'm gonna adjust this by five. So you can kind of do it either way. Um, then it'll give you kind of a readout of what your new quantity is gonna be, what the price is of this. Um, one thing to note is that you can do many items at once. You don't adjust things one item at a time. So if I had 10 different products that all needed to be adjusted, I would just add 10 rows to this and do it all as one big bulk adjustment um, so that I can do everything at once. Now, one last little note around this that is important to know is that if you, you can do an inventory adjustment and backdate it. So maybe I took inventory on, you know, May 31st and I want to, but I didn't get around to running the import into today. You can run it based on a previous date, but it's going to use the stock that you had on hand that day as you're doing this adjustment. Um, so you might have to adjust a few things and kind of the long story short there is, you want to do this adjustment the same day that you did the count. It's going to save you a little bit of pain and suffering of having to tweak things a week later when there's been more sales or more purchases and you have different socks on hand now. And so once we have that completed, of course, it kind of adds itself to a running list of all of the adjustments that we've ever made. Um, they come with a list of any of their reasons that they were made and then who actually did that adjustment. So you kind of have a running timeline on any of these records and what exactly happened to change the inventory.